Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm a little nervous, but here we go. Here we go. We're going to do this. We need to share with the world. Here we go. I got this. Hello guys, and welcome back to my channel, A Quiet Place, where we talk about faith, life, and perspective. And I'm so thankful for you guys being here. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope that you like it. And if you do, go ahead and look down my playlist and other videos I'm sure you will enjoy as well. If you have been here before, thank you so much for the support. Just spending time with me weekly and dealing with my rantings. I hope you really guys are enjoying the daily women's devotional. It honestly takes a lot of time because I am like having to be disciplined and yeah. So today we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic, which is probably going to be perking up everybody's ears. We're going to be looking at compelling societal issues dealing with, you guessed it, LGBT. Now I thought it would be totally appropriate for us to do this video because of course it is June and this is Pride Month. This is a huge issue today surrounding morality and I am sure that without a doubt this topic sparks tons of discussion. So without further ado, let's get into this video. So first and foremost, I want to start out with a prayer. So let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with us, to be with this discussion, to be with the hearers of this message, Lord. Let them know that it is not my words, but your words that are found in your scripture. We do all this in love. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So this is a very controversial topic, not just in society, but also in the church. And I dare to say that some people say that this topic has threatened to separate churches altogether. I wonder if it's even possible to mention this without debate, judging, or being condemnating. As soon as a Christian mentions gays and homosexuals, it's like, there they go again, talking about us, judging us, and condemning. And I hope that you guys still mind. I do have some notes because I really wanted to make this all inclusive and make sure that I pointed out all of my points. And we really want to make sure that we talk about this in a biblical sense. So we are not bashing homosexuals. At least I, as a Christian, am telling you that I'm not bashing homosexuals. It's kind of like in the same idea of other sins. So adultery, fornication, being a thief, homosexuals. It's not bashing. It is for me, lumped into all the other sins that the Bible tells me we should not be doing. So in general, when we ask ourselves what the Bible says about this is really the way we should really be approaching any topic and how we should be living our lives. So unfortunately, a lot of Christians that are radically like to the left or to the right really talk about homosexuals in a very derogatory and very negative way. They really bring about the wrong impression of what Christians believe about homosexuals and about what God says about the topic as well. They use the Bible in verses to condemn homosexuals instead of using it to show compassion and love that God tells us we need to be sharing with our brothers and sisters. So I'm going to be talking about homosexuality through the eyes of Jesus and through his love. The first Bible verse that I want to get into is Mark chapter 10 verse 6 and 9 and it says, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. This plainly shows that homosexuals are still men and women that were created by God, that God loves, and that they are a child of God. What we also see in this Bible verse is that God created the man and woman and it says that they should leave their father or leave their parents and become one flesh. I'm not going to get into the specifics about what flesh means because I'm sure we're all adults here and we know what that means. The second Bible verse that I want to talk about is found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 and it says, And God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So the very first part of Genesis 1 chapter, oh, excuse me, Genesis 1 verse 28 tells us that we need to be fruitful and multiply. Now, there are some denominations that talk about sexuality being just something for procreating. Um, but And, and the, I don't personally believe that. I believe that God also gave us sex as a form of enjoying one another and as a gift to a married couple, a husband and a wife. But on here, one of the main reasons in the beginning for sex was to be fruitful and to multiply and to fill the earth. So I believe it's kind of hard for that to happen when there are two people of the same sex together. So that is definitely something that is biblical and not my words. Now I'm just warning you as we're going along, it may be getting a little bit more difficult with the wording, but honestly, this is just loving conversation and talking about what the Bible says. So the next verse that we're going to be talking about is found in Leviticus chapter 18 verse 22 and it says you shall not lie with a male as with a woman it is an abomination and so 
it plainly says it here in Leviticus that we shall not be laying man with man or woman with women because it is an abomination. So in my mind, and I have said it before, when Jesus talks about an abomination, it's kind of like it's the worst word that he could ever say. Like it is not okay for him to do. So when he calls something an abomination, that's like saying it's really, really, really bad and off limits. The next Bible verse that I want to share with you guys is found in Romans chapter 1 verses 26 through 27 and it says, For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty of their error. And so in this verse, it's telling me that it was not okay. It is against nature. It says women were going against what was natural to them. And so were men. And so that clearly, and, and by the way, this is found in the New Testament. This is not in the Old Testament. And it's basically saying that we should not be laying with the same sex gender. It is not okay. It goes against nature, which means that it goes against what God created for us. So that pretty much explains itself. And one of my last verses that I want to share with you guys is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God, and such were some of you. So again, like in the beginning where we talked about in Mark, it talks about homosexuality being a sin just like everything else. And then my favorite part, because we're doing this in love, my favorite part is verse 11 that it says, And such were some of you, but you were washed and you were sanctified and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So just like every other sin, this is a sin that affects our flesh. But you know what? We are all still children of God. We all still have the same gift freely available to all of us. It doesn't mean that homosexuals are worse than I am. And the very last verse that I want to share with you guys is found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. And it says, Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And that is the whole point of this video is because we may be different than them it doesn't mean that God loves us anymore and it doesn't mean that God loves them any less their sin is different than my sin I have plenty of family members that are gay that are homosexuals that are transvestites you name it it's easy for me to get into my little Christian head and my little Christian world and think that that's against God I'm supposed to be shunning them but no and let me ask you if you are a Christian and you profess to be a Christian and you want to leave a Christian life and you want to do discipleship how are you supposed to make disciples how are you supposed to share the word of God and you think that you're better than them and you feel like you shouldn't engage with them how is the message going to get to them what kind of testimony are you sharing with them so for me like I said I have family members that are of the LGBT community and I still love them and I still don't treat them any differently because you know what they're a child of God and I'm a child of God. Their sin is different than my sin. We are both held by the same biblical standard. You can see their sin because it is clear for everybody to see, but you don't know what sin is in my heart. You don't know if I'm committing adultery with another God. You don't know if I'm lusting. You don't know if I'm watching pornography. You don't know if my sin is that I hate my brother. I mean, there's so many things that I am guilty of my sin that you cannot see. So we should never as Christians be judging our brothers and sisters in the homosexual community just because you can see their sin and you can't see mine. I dare to say that there is a person in the homosexual community that is a fighting because I know one personally is fighting with all their might not to give in to those temptations. And as long as they're fighting and they're praying, God will remove that from them. And then if I'm doing my little sin over here and I never repent, then I dare to say that I may not be entering the kingdom of heaven. All of this just to say that we need to love our brothers and sisters. 
Okay. We are, are not the judge. God is the judge of them and he will judge them accordingly, just like he will judge us. But again, we are called to love our brothers and sisters, to share Christ with them. And if we want to make a change, if we want to make an impact, if we want to share Jesus to other people, we can only be doing that through love. So I pray that you guys take advantage of this pride month and go out there and show them what true pride, what true love in Jesus Christ is. And let's uplift our brothers and sisters. The Bible says that we have to love the sinner, but not have to love the sin that each person is dealing with. So I hope that you guys learn something new. Again, I apologize if I have offended anybody. There are tons more verses that I can definitely be sharing, but I felt that I could not go on the rest of June and Pride Month without sharing my stance on it, biblical stance on it. I think there's a lot of Christians out there that are kind of worried that this is like a really a difficult topic, but you know what? If I am not going to share the light to the world, then who else is? And by all means, again, and I will say it and say it again, I am not perfect. I am a sinner, just like everybody else. With all that being said, I hope you guys are blessed. You take care. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up, share it with anybody else, and make sure that you subscribe below if you haven't already. I post videos weekly, and go ahead and check out my playlist on my home renovations, and I also have another one on my women's devotional. Till next time, ciao!